Thank you. God bless everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit open up your heart to God's word for salvation, healing, and deliverance. Today is uh, an awesome day. It's a great day. I basically, I basically want to give a, a message that I received on a Sunday. I was supposed to give this message on a Sunday. Don't mind these guys. We need prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so I will take my reading from Jeremiah 24, verse 7. It says, I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God, and they will return to me with all their heart. Okay, the party to return to me, uh, where does it come from? It comes from eternity, when we was created by God from the very beginning. We were right inside God. He created us. I know people who look at it uh, saying God was speaking to the Israelis, but everybody comes from God. So <clears throat> God wants you to know him the way you used to have a relationship with him in eternity past. Meaning to say before you came to this earth. So there is uh, one gentleman that was very close to me that used to make this prayer most of the time whenever I was with him. He would say, uh, I want to know God the way I'm known by him. He used to make this kind of prayer every time I was with him. And I used to say, wow, this is a powerful prayer, prayer point. And in those times, I would never make that prayer because... I would be I was going through a certain season and a certain dimension already that time uh, seeing the visions of the Lord himself the Lord Jesus to be clear the Lord Jesus Christ who died and rose again for our sins on daily basis uh, witnessing him through uh, various forms through revelation through visions and he would speak to me day and night. So I would know God, I would know God's feelings at that moment. Let me say Christ's feelings. Yes, he's got emotions. He's got emotions because he has a soul just like us. So does God have emotions? If you didn't know, yes, certainly God has emotions. That's why the Bible says, the, God gets angry with the wicked. It comes from emotions. Those are emotions. So he can be happy, he can be joyful, just like any other person. So I want you as a believer to grow and reach a level where you know what God is feeling, just like you are known by him. He knows what you are going through. He knows every tear that you have shed. He knows each time you smiled. He knows uh, everything about you, basically. So I want you to see a, a gap. Of course, you have a relationship with God. But I want you to close the gap between you and God of emotions. I want you to get to know and learn God. Where you get to understand that this is what God is feeling at this time. I'm not talking about assumptions. I'm talking about walking with God. When the Bible says Enoch walked with God, uh, people like Job, Daniel, uh, Moses, Abraham, these people, they all walked with God. Elijah, they all walked with God. I want you to close the gap where we are still in a season where we assume. And sometimes people assume that they are saved, but yet they are not. Some people, they don't even know if they still have the Holy Spirit or not but of which the holy spirit is a person of emotions is a person just like yourself 
is as real as you are. So I want you to get to a point where you begin to know your God in person. Have that desire. Have that hunger. God has declared a certain hunger in your spirit already. He has deposited a certain hunger in your spirit already. For you to begin to seek him, seek his face, pray and fast to know him. So what needs to happen now? Most people uh, pray, but they don't expect. They won't be expectant, which is why they, they don't get results. Uh, this is the kind of a God that I'm talking about here. It's not a religious God. Uh, this is also the message that I wanted to speak to various religions. I will not mention their names. But this is what I want to say. Uh, are you a person that asks yourself all the time, is Jesus real? But he's just like any other God that I have heard of. I want to tell you that Jesus is real. That's number one. Two, he's not like any other a God. Jesus is a living God. He is different from uh, other gods. And he's willing for you to test him because the scripture says test and see that the Lord is good. Uh, the kind of a God that I have served is that kind of a God that if you try to put him to the test it's not like you will refuse or you will refrain from the test. He is that kind of a God who says test and see. Like try me. God wants you to try him. It's not sin for somebody to ask, is Jesus real? It's not sinful for somebody to ask if Jesus is real at all. It's not sinful. I know most people think that uh, the Lord will have a problem with you if you start asking yourself, even as a believer. Personally, myself, I, I no longer ask that because I know that is real. But I always, uh, uh, sometimes test God in certain ways when I'm saying test God I think maybe the term test now because I no longer test him if he's real or not <clears throat> I'm talking about uh, if I'm right standing for example let me say if I'm right standing with God I declare that tomorrow this is what will happen and the thing transpires so meaning to say I'm testing my relationship with him if I'm right standing with God. So if we have a relationship with God, all of us as his sons, maybe you're a believer or a non-believer, they're saying, is he real? He's very real. You can test him and he's willing to go through the test and he, he will definitely prove himself to be alive. As long as that question is coming from the heart. As long as that question is coming from the spirit. When I'm saying from the heart or spirit what am i really talking about i'm talking about uh, let's say if he is real after you discover that he is real then what are you going to follow him if you are going to follow him definitely you will agree to the test and he will prove himself to be alive to to you he will prove to be alive in your life so when he proves to be alive you've got an obligation to fulfill you've got to follow him live according to his word live by his standard I don't know if uh, it's coming right to somebody, but let me put it this way. For Christians, those that are already Christians, those that are saying they have a relationship with him, and maybe you are not, your eyes uh, are still dim, you still have scales, you are still going through deliverance, your spiritual eyes have not yet opened, I pray that they, they open in Jesus' name, in short. But... Be that kind of a person that want a relationship uh, that you have with your physical father or that you would have if you had a physical father. You know, uh, if I have a physical son, like I've got biological sons, by the grace of God, I only have sons. Uh, I always think about what these children eat, what they do. I know they may think that this man does not really cogitate what they do and all that, but I'm so, so much concerned about what they do. Not in carefulness, but I, I'm involved in their lives. I want to be involved in their lives. And they really don't know. By the time they want me to be involved, the way they think that I should be, I would have played my part as a father, on the, like in the background, in a way that they may not see. So... 
Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Father, they all want to have okay, they all want to have a personal relationship with you. I know most people we always bracket them and just make them one person of which they are. But my emphasis today is I want you to know Christ in person. I want you to know the Father in person. I want you to know Jesus in person. Take time. You know, if there are three like this and yet they are one, take time to know each one of them because there are certain things that Christ uh, likes. There are certain things that the Holy Spirit likes. There are certain things that the Father likes. I know somebody will say, okay, does now God dislike some things that Christ dislikes? No, I'm talking about like a more like a, let me say, I can like a ice cream. Maybe you can just be fine with it. Somebody else can be fine with the ice cream, but they really don't like it. So they all have certain likes. Like personally, I know there are things that are Christ likes, like the flowers and things that are sweet. Let me say sweet foods. So if you have a personal relationship with Christ, you will know what Christ likes. If you have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will know uh, what he likes. For example, if you read the Bible in the book of Jeremiah, it speaks about a uh, God speaking to his people in the morning. So meaning to say, it's good for everybody to pray during the day and at night. But God expects to speak to his sons in the morning. I don't know if it will make sense to somebody, but for those that are born of God, for those that really desire to grow, you will grow. Because the Father himself likes to speak to you in the morning. The time of Christ, I cannot speak of it, but from what I've learned, even when you go through the scripture, you will take note that God always wants to speak to his people early in the morning. So when it's early in the morning, that speaks from 12 a.m., to any time in the morning but when you when you're saying in the morning god has already noticed and he has seen uh, when people slumber the enemy takes advantage of them when people slumber when they don't take their time to speak to their god and plan their day in the hands of christ in the hands of god the enemy comes to ruin their lives so in the morning uh, all these scriptures there in the book of Psalms, Jeremiah, God speaks to his people in the morning. God speaks to his people in the morning. We also are to speak to him in the morning. So if he speaks in the morning, he speaks in what time? Not in dreams. Of course, in dreams he can speak, but he speaks to a person that is talking to him. Prayer is basically a two-way communication where you pray and then he speaks back in that time. So are you a person that really has been saying, I've been trying to hear from God all these years. I'm talking about God the Father himself. But I still do not know his voice. And for those that are trying to distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Father, and Jesus Christ, the best time to pray for those that want to know, you pray in the morning, you are going to hear the voice of God. And when I'm saying you are going to hear the voice of God, uh, sometimes he may not speak directly to you he can send his angels he can send his angels this stuff that i'm ministering on it's for the matured i'm sent uh, to minister matured stuff to matured people so for those that are still uh, futile those that are infants in christ this type of gospel you will not understand it that i minister myself but if you truly desire to grow, you will grow. So, God speaks to his people in the morning. The voice that you will hear, the message that you will hear in the morning is coming from God the Father. So that means if you see an angel, during these hours, it's an angel of the Father. They are angels of Jesus Christ. They are angels of the Holy Spirit. I once ministered on this. But I'm saying... If you see these angels in the early hours or the spirit beings that would be sent to you in those early hours, most of the time, most of the time, it will be the angels of the Father. The Father God himself. We are all one people. We are, or even all the angels, we are, they are all one. They all belong to all. They all belong to God in summary. 
as in three in one, which is Trinity. But hear me well. Jesus Christ has his angels. The Holy Spirit has his angels. Just like on us, on human beings, God has his own people. Jesus Christ has his own people. The Holy Spirit has his own. To take maturity for you to understand it, the, I will not go deeper into this, but uh, my emphasis right now is knowing God. Uh, remember we said the, the emphasis today is knowing God. So you want to know God the way he knows you. This stuff that I'm ministering on right now is deep stuff. It's deep stuff. And it's not like a, something that you can find anyway. No, I know what I'm talking about. I've got a personal relationship with the Father. I've got a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I've got a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. In the same hours of the morning, uh, of course, God varies. Uh, it all varies with uh, different people. The Holy Spirit is the one that initiates. Let me say, when a, when now a person, let me say, when a person sees a vision by the eye of the Spirit, what is the chemical composition of that whole mirror? It means the Holy Spirit is the one that enabled your spiritual eye to open for you to see. Most of the time, in those hours, like in the early hours, it's God. Of course, midnight, most of the time, I have taken notice the Holy Spirit. Most of the time, I have taken notice the Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus is more involved yeah, in our day-to-day -day life, how we live this life. And like in like around 7, 8 p.m., those times, those hours, I have noticed. And even if you, if you, want, to, if you want to check scripture, go and check scripture. And remember, what I'm saying is, uh, let me try to break it down a little bit. The Bible says he himself was tempted in every way we were tempted. Where was he? Was he tempted in heaven or here on earth? So meaning to say, that's why the Bible says he's a faithful high priest unto us. Meaning to say, there are certain errands that we go through here that Christ himself is involved because he was involved in the same world that we are living in. So Christ, in the during like the hours of the day and night, most of the time, Christ most of the time but reaching unto a midnight going to morning is the Holy Spirit those are the hours yeah I'm talking about things that I know I'm speaking about things that I vividly know when you go and pray when you desire to know your God uh, you start noticing to say you know what uh, let me put it this way let me say uh, these are three different coaches. One coach likes teaching you in the morning. Maybe let's say it's a math uh, teacher. Then the English teacher prefers uh, in the day. Then the other teacher prefers at night. There's a reason why all of them, because if you can ask the math teachers, uh, I think worldwide and or in most countries, Math teachers will tell you that it's best to learn math in the morning. Why? Because you can still focus very well. You are still focused. You are still fresh. Your mind is still fresh. It's not yet tired. But other subjects, they will tell you at any time it's still, it's still fine. Because the mind will be able to comprehend. But the mind is able to focus early in the morning. Is able to catch things early in the morning memorize and all those kinds of things <clears throat> so the same way with jesus christ the father and the holy spirit and remember <clears throat> it's more like a let me put it this way i know a lot of people will be confused and even if let's say the the media is to take on this story they can try to find a fault in it but there's no fault in, in any way it's more like a uh, Jesus Christ can forgive everyone. The Holy Spirit can forgive also you. God also can forgive you. But whose blood do we need to be made clean? It's the blood of Jesus Christ. So they have different roles. 
I don't know if you get the sense. They've delegated themselves different works. So what is the role of the Holy Spirit in this season? The Holy Spirit is to multiply visions to us according to Jesus Christ before he left the earth. He says, the Holy Spirit will bring everything into remembrance as you have gone, as I will be leaving. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. Let me say anything that pertains remembrance or most of the, most of the time is the Holy Spirit. However, Jesus Christ can also remind you. However, the Father can also remind you. But the person who specializes in that is the Holy Spirit. Who shows you vision? He says he will tell you all the truth. He will convict you of all your sins. That was that is the Holy Spirit. Does it mean Jesus cannot convict you? He can, but he does not specialize in that. Just like the Father. He does not specialize in that. The Father can also convict you of your sins, but he does not specialize in that. So the Holy Spirit can do what Christ Jesus specializes in, but it doesn't mean he is now switching completely. No. The blood of Jesus is what we need for us to be cleansed from all unrighteousness. The Holy Spirit can also <clears throat> forgive us our sins. The Father can also forgive us our sins. Somebody will say, give me a scripture for that. The Bible says, yeah, the Holy Spirit, if you grieve him, says those that uh, will sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. There is a particular sin that is being mentioned. It's not like all types of sins, no. There are certain sins here that are being pointed out, that are being pinpointed. So, <clears throat> they are all three and also they are one. So, you need to get to a level where you know all of them. You need to get to a level where you have a relationship with all of them. You need to, to get to a level where you know your God. I pray that the Holy Spirit open up your heart to this revelation for your salvation and deliverance and spiritual growth. In Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> so, as a believer, the gap that you have with your God. Remember, we are talking about knowing God. When you are saying knowing God, somebody is asking himself, what is it that, what are we even talking about? This knowledge I'm giving, it's knowing, that's what we call knowing God. I understand God and I know God. This has come by revelation. This gospel is not coming from men nor through men, but it has come by a revelation of Christ Jesus, directly from him to myself. They are prophets of God. They are prophets of Jesus Christ. They are prophets of the Holy Spirit. That's why you see, uh, when Christ Jesus was here, he was complimenting the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He was not complimenting his personal ministry. So that's how it is. You cannot... Christ glorifies the Holy Spirit and the Father. The Holy Spirit compliments Christ and the Father. The Father compliments them all. I think I will leave you here today because I feel like if I take you too deep today, I may lose a lot of people. So I'll go and digest and meditate on this message and ask the Holy Spirit to give me a simpler term, a simpler way to convey this message to his people. Christ Jesus and the Father. So may God increase you and empower you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that you shall be known by God. You shall know God as you are known by him. In Jesus' mighty name. You shall know God's feelings over every event. You shall know God's thoughts on every event. You shall know what transpires. The reason why we are able to come and say, this team will win against this team or this will happen in future. is because we have managed to tap in God's emotions. We've managed to tap in God's insight. We've managed to tap in uh, in Christ's emotions, the Holy Spirit emotions. We have a relationship. It's not an issue where as somebody just keep prophesying. No. Of course, the Bible says, yeah, God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. 
of course there's a time where god comes to speak to a person as a servant but there's a time where he speaks to your friend where he wants to speak to you as a friend you know how it is here on earth you may have a wife you may have a brother you may have whatsoever a neighbor and everybody then comes that time where you say you know what this type of a discussion i want to do it with my friend i know my friend will respond in a certain way so this is the friendship that i'm talking about a friendship that you can have with god god knows how you are going to respond even you you must start learning and knowing how god is going to respond on each in each and every event so meaning to say in and out of season as a believer in christ jesus involve god know what he stands for know what he believes know his emotions get involved let god be involved he already is involved but get him involved like tell him that we are doing this together we are working together that's what god wants wants to hear it's not an issue of assumptions involve the living god in in your errands involve him and I assure you that there is going to be a deep dimension of growth. For those that desire this same gift of revelation, I decree and declare according to Ephesians 1.17. May God give you in Jesus' mighty name. Since it's God's desire according to Jeremiah 24.7 that we should know our God, I declare that you shall know God in Jesus' mighty name. As you make an effort by faith, as you pray, wait on God, meditate on his word, read his word. He will reveal himself unto you in Jesus' mighty name. They will all three reveal themselves to you in the name of Jesus. I declare growth in the mighty name of Jesus. For those that are being tossed to and from, to and from by the enemy in this same season that we are in, whether it's coronavirus, whether it's whatever sickness, there is no name that is above the name of Christ. Whatever name of sickness that you have, whatever demon that is upon you, whatever spirit that is troubling you, I silence it in Jesus' name. I silence it by the name that is above all names. Whatever knowledge that contradicts the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ, I bind it in the name of Jesus. We silence such knowledge in the name of Jesus. We exalt the knowledge of Christ Jesus. May God do it for you in the mighty name of Jesus. May your eyes of the Spirit be open to see the angelic beings, to see the hosts of heaven, to see the spirit beings in Jesus' mighty name. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Global Sea Trinity Hall. Like, share, and subscribe. Impact. <laughs> Jesus mighty name.